right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Path of Rage and today's Star Citizen coverage and we have got a big update for you guys in store today. <clears throat> Pardon me. Not only did we have an uh, inside Star Citizen that introduced us to the uh, FPS weapons design and concept team, so you get to know the actual people developing the, the game a bit more but it actually showed a bunch of behind the scenes work uh, with them working on various weapons and whatnot on their computers so we get a, a nice little preview of things that are currently in development and being worked on and coming down the pipeline so we're going to get a bit into that and then of course the absolute biggest news not five minutes after I started recording this episode to make sure that it's fresh in my mind the Evil Cotty were dropped the 3.24 patch. That was supposed to be the 3.23 patch, but they bumped it up to, to 3.24 because they felt it was a better number for what this is adding. And this is the personal hangars and freight elevators and everything that we've been waiting for for the 3.23 patch. I got my hands on it. I'm going to give you my fresh impressions, so let's get stuck in. For Inside Star Citizen, I honestly recommend watching this episode. It is an interesting one, again, more so because of what they show in the background. Uh, meeting the developers is, is all cool. Uh, seeing who they are and, and who the people that are actually working on the game is well enough, but that's not really content that enthuses me. However, as a large part of Inside Star Citizen this time, they showed off a lot of the weapons that these people are working on, what their kind of thought process is, and we actually get a look at some upcoming uh, new weapons as well, including one that looks like a repurposed Grey Cat multi-tool, <laughs> for crying out loud, some pyro-focused weapons, uh, space mines, which will apparently be a big deal in uh, Squadron 42, probably to ensure the players or help direct the players into a specific area considering how big space can be in this game they showed off a lot of we uh, new weapons or in process weapons from volt which are all the electric based weapons including like the way they're showing how they're moving forward with the longer you hold the trigger down eventually you'll go from sh shooting what looks like individual shots to actually firing a beam until you either overheat you overheat or you run out of energy in the battery i think it looks like it's going to overheat from the footage that they showed here but the volt weapons are cool i'm adding more of them to the game I, i'm all about including what looks like right here to be the non-lethal stun weapon the taser style weapon this is supposed to be something for uh, bounty hunters that we've been looking forward to a long time and now we might be seeing that move into the PU soon so you know thumbs up on that they're also adding a civilian variant to the P8 AR uh, assault rifle that we've seen in the squadron 42 footage many many times that is not currently in the persistent universe and players have been kind of asking for it but CRG has just recently said that and in this episode too that they want to keep that special for Quadrant which I get so that doesn't feel like those of us who've been playing in the persistent universe for any length of time will go into Squadron and go yeah this is the same gun I've used forever we'll get some of that but at least the hero gun the P8AR uh, in Squadron 42 will be mostly new to us and it, it'll feel fresh. So we're going to be getting a P4 or P8 AR civilian variant, slightly shorter, a little bit different tweaking to the gun, but it is coming and I'm I'm glad to see that. It's a cool looking weapon. They also gave us an update on the crossbow, which has been a long time in coming. You can see from the footage here on the screen that it looks phenomenal, but it's not in the game yet. And they just they said that this has a lot to do with not so much the gun itself, the, the crossbow itself, but the where the arrows go in the world. 
and having them persist and how that's all dealt with I, I don't know how big or small of an issue uh, that's going to be in the long run but that is apparently the only thing that's really holding it back and they are kind of trying to figure out how to get around this problem and actually bring this crossbow to us finally and that was a quick look at Inside Star Citizen. I highly suggest you guys check out the episode. As always, to be honest, uh, seriously, uh, no matter how many people you might subscribe to bringing you the Star Citizen news, always check out the, the videos themselves that they put up. You, you'll get all the information you want directly from the company. You'll see what the rest of us who have been supporting this game will see. So again, links in the comments below. And now, let's get into... 3.24 so 324 dropped for evil Cotty tonight it was a, a short test uh it wasn't available to all backers and it is unfortunately nda so i cannot show you any footage or images of the test but i can talk about the patch notes and i can give you my impressions having played with it and tested it for the last several hours. So, first thing was first, the, the feedback and the testing focus of 3.24 were personal and instance hangers, freight elevators, the storage kiosks now, uh, working now, hover trolleys, and hangar decorations. So, with the hangar decorations and the hover trolleys, you could buy those at Dumper's Depot and bring them up in your uh, freight elevators um, I never actually got a, a hover trolley <laughs> because I was at area 18 and dumpers depot didn't have them I don't know if anyone else got one when I was on <laughs> in the the char that I was playing I never once saw somebody say anything about the hover trolleys if you're watching this and you're one of the evil Cotty as well sound off in the comments below if, if you guys got one I did not uh, hangar decorations were there. You, you could buy them, bring them up again, and, and put them in your thing. I actually didn't try to get any decorations yet because I was testing the, the big stuff. The personalized instant hangers, the freight elevators, and the storage access. We'll go smallest to first, or largest, and bear with me. So, storage access. You got any of you who have been playing in the uh, PTU and in the current live environment will know that when you wake up in your hab, there is the item kiosk, your storage, your gear storage kiosk. They're also all over the landing zones, wherever you look. These things are replacing your inventory that you've had up till now that's currently on live, where you hit I and it, your whole inventory pops up no matter where you are because you have an infinite bag of holding. You can transfer stuff to your ship or the landing zone without any troubles whatsoever just by clicking a few menus. All of that is gone. Now you will walk up to that kiosk and you will see uh, a two-sided menu. On the right side is the inventory available to you, and it's all of your items. It has filters so you can focus on armor, weapons, or just like before. Uh, but again, it's a new interface. I wish I could take a screenshot and show you. And on the left, it, ha it, it has an empty spot, and it says, I believe it says warehouse. Now that I'm not actually looking at it. Or, um, no, drawer. It says add to drawer. On, on this thing. So you pick your armor, you highlight all the things that you want, and you click add to drawer. Boots over onto the left, and when you want to uh, equip it or whatnot from that point in time, you'll get a new icon, a, a UI interface on this kiosk on the bottom left hand side that will allow you to open the drawer. At that point, a very similar uh, inventory screen to what we have now when you just press I thumbs up but it only has the items that you put into that drawer in it you, and you can equip them directly from there that's kind of how it works uh, when I tried to actually take them out without equipping them it didn't 
do anything. Like I, I dropped them on the floor. <laughs> you still, you'll still have to repick them up, but you can just right click on them and equip from there. I actually like this a lot. It, it gives you a spot where you actually access your inventory. The moment I left the have and I hit I, all that did was put me in the, in the third person camera. That inventory mode used to have, but without the UI inventory elements. I I like this. It worked perfectly fine for me. Um, I had some odd issues trying to put items back into the inventory. It worked a couple of times. You put it in and you kind of repeat the process, but instead of putting it into drawer, you add to warehouse. And then it, it does the same thing in reverse. I had a couple items disappear on me and then reappear as well, like right after. So I don't I don't know if it was working fully as intended or if that was server desync. Desync, pardon me. But in any case, for the most part, this worked well. Uh, I can see where they're going, but I do like the fact that it ties your inventory to a location, to a spot that you actually have to go somewhere to get your armor. You can't just pull it out of thin air. The next part about this is... The, per, the personal and instance hangers. Now, the way it worked in this build is you didn't go to the ASOP terminal and summon a ship right away. You could, don't get me wrong, and it would give you a, um, a hanger sized to that ship. However, if you didn't call a ship and you went into the spaceport elevator and looked on the, the control panel, instead of seeing... The list of hangers available, hangar one, hangar two, etc. You would see the spaceport icon where you could go to and the hangar with your name on it for a size. So I have a cutlass, it gave me a small hangar. Click on that, it actually takes you to hangar. You go in there, you can spend as much time in there as you want. Uh, I never once got a uh, impound notice that you you know you gotta store your ship and make way it's your hangar now apparently the way they have this set up is that multiple instances of hangars can be using the same uh, doors to leave uh, and come and go <laughs> uh, from what I understand now obviously once you land and the doors close Somebody else coming to land in that hangar is going to see an open, fresh hangar. It will be their personal hangar or one they're renting if this is not their landing zone. And, and you'll be perfectly fine. So they managed to stack them up. We were able to hear the sound effects of other hangars in our hangars from time to time, but not always. But going into the hangar looks exactly as it always did. So when you go in there, there's no ship on the ground whatsoever. And now... Not only do you have the item storage kiosk in your hangar, you also have an ASOP terminal, and you have a terminal for the freight elevator as well. You actually got, the one I was in, I had a couple of ASOP uh, terminals, I believe. But anyway, when you summon your ship with the ASOP terminal, all the lighting in the hangar changes. You start getting like the warning flashing lights going, swinging, or, you know, swooping around. Uh, you hear a warning klaxon, siren go off. And the doors, the, the base of the floor separates just like the the doors above you when you're, you're lifting off. The, board, the floor separates, and when you look down into the pit, you'll see your spaceship there on another platform, which then slowly but surely rises into place, all while this atmospheric lighting and noise is going off. And when it gets up to the top, the warning lights go off, the lighting comes back to normal, and there's your ship sitting right there. Storing it is exactly the same thing, but in reverse. All the lights will come on, get the warning klaxons and sirens, which are actually quite loud, and your ship will sink into the floor, the doors and the floor will close over it, and that, that's it. If you summon a uh, ground vehicle, 
I was able to summon a gray cat. It will come up on the same uh, launch pad. It doesn't, those, they don't come up on the freight elevator. That is for cargo and for items put into SCU boxes. So I brought a gray cat up and uh, put it off to the side and then was able to summon my cutlass. And unfortunately, I never actually got to put the gray cat on <laughs> the cutlass. The first time, it just vanished. I think I had it too close to the uh, the landing zone, like where the landing pad where the, the ship is actually sitting. The second time the ship was up, I was going to get in it and the server crashed. <laughs> so I was I was unable to actually get the gray cat onto the ship, but I was able to summon it in, put it off to the side, leave it sit there, and call my ship up. If it hadn't crashed, I'd have been able to put a ground vehicle on my ship in my hangar without having to go to another uh, landing spot, which is oh, that's phenomenal. I, this having to go somewhere else just to pick up my ground vehicle was the number one reason I just never used them. It was a pain in the ass. Now here you go, it, it's it's perfectly fine. None of this was problematic, except for if you had a server error or you crashed to desktop. Or crashed at all or if you fell through the floor and had to respawn whenever you went back to your uh, personal hangar you were then told that you were trespassing even though you clicked on your named personal hangar <laughs> in the elevator this is obviously they're gonna have to work on the bug at must have something to do with sharing the space with the instances but it happened repeatedly another bug that I found with it because I started with a cutlass, I went to uh, the ship shop and bought a 400i to get a bigger ship, which comes with a medium hanger. It's the only one uh, that you can buy there for the, the money that you have in this thing. So I picked up a 400i and I went back and lo and behold, when I went into the elevator, it told me that I had a small hanger and I had a medium hanger. Now, from what I understand, and the way CIG has said this uh, in the past, you're only supposed to have one hangar that is sized to your largest ship. Which will feel weird if you own a Carrick or a Banu Merchantman, and you're summoning up your, <laughs> you know, your your 100i. Which is going to be a little dinky thing in the middle of this giant floor. But, in any case, I had two hangars uh, in, in my list, and yes, I could go to both of them. If I went to the small hangar, obviously, I could not call in a 400i. If I went to the medium hangar, I could call call in both. Not on the same platform, but you get what I mean. This this was a, one of the, the bigger bugs that I came across, but it wasn't a game-breaking issue. Um, the freight elevators are finicky right now. Very, very finicky in my uh, experience. They... By the time I started testing into them, uh, things were going nuts with the servers. Things always start off smooth and they get worse. We had quite a few server errors where the replication layer would, would bring us back up and then you'd have to deal with your inventory not working properly um, or as it loaded back in. There were a lot of server errors with this and Quite a few 30Ks that ended up with people crashing to desktop. I was monitoring the uh, Evocati chat at the same time. So we were all experiencing this. Um, it hit all of the different shards that everyone was on. All at different times, mind you. Um, some of what came up seemed to be... Uh, would it be happening a lot with the freight elevators. I would see a crash on my server, like a server error or a 30K. And I would see in the Evocati testing chat that that happened the minute somebody tried to move like all of their inventory. Or they tried to summon up a bunch of different things in boxes on the freight elevators. Don't get me wrong, it was happening before that, almost right off the bat as well. But uh, it's it still was happening. There's obviously some work to go. Now, I want to say... Overall, I was very 
very impressed with this 3.24 patch. Very impressed. This changes the game on a fundamental way. Like this is, you can tell from the way it's set up, the new kiosks, everything. This is a lot of new back-end tech that they had to tie into what was already there. And especially with the landing zones and the, the programming, the logic around them or whatnot. This is, was a huge undertaking and it shows because when you are actually in the game, you know, put it, put aside the, the, the early Evocati bugs, forget about that. When you're inside the game and you're seeing the difference between how this changes things with inventory management with ship management, with uh, cargo management, because you can now buy cargo and have it auto-loaded onto the ship and off of the ship. Uh, that was something I didn't get to test quite yet before the end either, but other people were giving it a go, so, you know, and hit, hit or miss, buggy, as this patch was. But it's it's one of those things that, when you take a step back and you you really look at the fundamentals of this gameplay system it really does change star citizen in a huge way it makes it feel a lot more realistic again you cannot just pull out your magic bag of holding anywhere in area 18 and just start shuffling your items all around willy-nilly without a care in the planet or a care in the world no you actually have to go to the personal storage kiosks for certain items like armor and weapons and guns but you won't be able to use it for s you know one or two or three or four SEU boxes full of stuff for that you have to use the freight elevator it makes it all much more realistic without being wildly time consuming that I found it, it really wasn't any different time wise than how it works out now it's just done in a different manner overall again i am very very impressed with this 3.24 patch so far folks i cannot wait for this to get out into the larger community once we get some more bug testing done gets it more viable for a larger community so we don't have as many server errors but i can't wait to hear from you guys in the comments below about how you think this feature feels once you finally get your hands on it it really really is a game changer so that is going to call it for our star citizen coverage for this week i hope you enjoyed it if you thought i did a good uh, good job this episode give me a thumbs up if not give me a thumbs down like always seriously sound off in the comments below tell me what you think uh, about all of this this project what you'd like to see I love this this game, and I'd love to hear from you all. Uh, it just, yeah, it's awesome. Let's get into this. Uh, subscribe if you're new to help me grow the channel. And until next time, I've been Rage at Games, and I will see you moving cargo in the verse. Bye-bye.